We haven't really touched on the undercard um, and given its full its full kind of shine. And we're going to do that now. Let's start with Josh Kelly versus Liam Smith, a fight that no one predicted. I mean, me and you were kind of speculating about what the undercard fights could be. Didn't expect this one to be announced. I didn't expect this at all. Um, I didn't know either guy was going to be on this card. I was thinking, is Liam going to come down to 154? Is Josh going to go up to 160? In the end, it is Josh Kelly that goes up to 160. This is an interesting fight. Liam Smith now, I think, will be 35 at the time this fight rolls round. He's coming off defeat to Chris Eubank Jr. Josh Kelly's looked good at 154 pounds on the cusp of maybe fighting someone in the top five or six or getting a world title shot. Interesting that they've decided to make this one happen. Yeah, and it's that middleweight, well, as you say, which is the fascinating thing. And it's all about how much Liam Smith's got left. Um, obviously, he's got the attitude. He's got the history. He's been a world champion at light middleweight. Um, he's had a brilliant first fight against Chris Eubank Jr., where he put him away in a couple of rounds or three or four rounds. Um, didn't look good in the rematch, but he looked injured as well. Yeah. But Chris Eubank look, Jr. looked um, fantastic that night. We'll come to him in a mi minute, of course. Um, but yeah, I like it at middleweight. And uh, um, Josh Kelly's got something to prove. He, he, he's really rejuvenated and reborn under Adam Booth. And I can't wait to see it. Yeah, no, it's a fascinating fight and agreed. Um, both of them have something to prove. Is Josh Kelly ready for that next step up? What's left with Liam Smith? We touched on it. I think it probably is going to still fight the night and that's Boazzi versus Willie Hutchinson. Not just because of what happened in the last week or so, but just because of how good Hutchinson looked against Craig Richards. He surprised me. I have to admit, I put my hand up. I read that fight completely wrong. Boazzi is a step up from Richards, but Willie Hutchinson has a style very reminiscent of a Billy Joe Saunders or a Tyson Fury, where I think he can cause problems for a lot of these fighters. I think this is going to be a great fight. Yeah, I do. I mean, I do. I mean, I picked Willie Hutchinson to beat Craig Richards, but you I'm did. not sure I'm picking him to uh, to pick Joshua Boatsy uh, to beat uh, defeat Joshua Boatsy. I still think he might press him, but I think in order to he outboxed Craig Richards and bedazzled him and confused him. Um, I don't think he's going to hurt Boatsy in the same way. Mm. Um, with the same, and he's going to probably fight him in a similar kind of way. Um, and if he stands with him, um, Watsi can look quite limited at times, but what he does, the simplicity of what he done, he does and what he's done so far in his career is very powerful. Um, it's a fight I'm really looking forward to. I, I think it's going to be a great fight. And I think Boatsy, um probably wins on points and, and gets his way through it. But it's going to be a good one. It's a good matchup, isn't it? I like that matchup a lot. Again, look, we wanted to see Boatsy versus Anthony Yard. That isn't happening. Willie Hutchinson steps up to the table. And I think um, it's a good fight. It's a shame the Anthony Yard situation. We'll get into that on another show. Uh, Anthony Kakache versus Josh Warrington. Kakache, I thought, was one of the standout performers at Riyadh season, beating Joe Cordina, the new IBF Super Featherweight champion. Josh Warrington, a two-time former IBF featherweight champion, steps up. One win in five for Josh. And doing the face-off between these two, I, honestly, I, I couldn't tell you the size difference. Kache looked huge. He looked enormous. Someone that looks like he could campaign at 135 pounds, maybe even 140. Uh, whereas Josh is just Josh. That's his size. Um, I think this fight will be interesting for a few rounds, but I think Kache will get to Warrington. Um, I just think he's... It almost feels like it's Kakache's time. And he's actually older than Warrington, but he feels the fresher of the two. And after that Cordina performance, I just I, I can't see a way Josh gets this done. Yeah, Kakache did look very, very good against um, Joe Cordina in Riyadh at the, on the, on the uh, five. Was it the 5v5? Yeah. No, um, was it? Uh, no, no, it wasn't. No, it, it wasn't, was, was it? Knockout Chaos. It was Knockout yeah. Chaos. <laughs> Back in March. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, lost track. Um, so no, no, on. no, it wasn't. It was on the Fury. Was it on the Fury Usyk undercard? Fury Usyk undercard. Yeah. No, wait. Was it? I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I, I cannot was, remember I right now. I think it was Fury Usyk. Remember. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. So Kakachi and um, thank you to our editor there, by the way, for finally putting us straight. Yeah. Um, thanks, Jeremy. Um, yeah. Um, it was a terrific fight. We lose track, don't we, week to week? Um, 
It was uh, Kakachi looked very strong. Cordina struggled at the weight. Um, and remember, he has been a lightweight for a lot of his career, and it, super featherweight was too much for him. Um, and Warrington's been a featherweight for most of his career, and he's been through some very tough fights. I think Kakache catches up with him by the mid rounds and stops him, unfortunately, for Josh. Yeah, and I do wonder if, if he does that. But it'd be that exciting that. while it lasts. Yeah, no, Very that's exciting. one thing. I think even Josh said, Josh said, look, His Excellency wants to put on exciting fights. Josh's style is always entertaining and exciting. He'll bring a few thousand down from Leeds as well. And I mean, if you didn't think Wembley was going to be noisy, then think again if Josh Warrington's well, army turn up. That's a very good point because there was a period when outside the heavyweights, he was the most followed boxer time after time after time. Yeah. Look how many times he, you know, he filled out um, arenas and, and stadiums in Leeds. Um, and also, I want to congratulate him on starting his own promotions, by the way, because they're beginning now as well. He's got oh, his Josh, own... Josh Warrington. He's putting his own events together, yeah, which is Lovely. Brilliant. Love to yeah. see that. It's always yeah. good to see fighters when, you know, if they're honest with themselves, when they know they are coming to the end and is that kind of final maybe couple of years that you start doing stuff and thinking beyond that. So it's good to see Warrington putting on um, promotions. That's, that's a good one. I mentioned at the top, Gareth, that it was supposed to be Christian Bain Jr. versus Hamza Shiraz. That's the one that a lot of people wanted for. Uh, a lot of people, I think, would have been excited seeing that on the card. A definite case of who is the best middleweight in Britain. It didn't happen. Here's what Hamza Shiraz had to say about Eubank Jr. not being on the card. When you get an opp opportunity like this from his, ex his excellency and the team, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. You take the fight, no matter who they put in front of you. Um, so yeah, it's, it's extremely foolish of him, to say the least. But listen, Tyler then he stepped up, and he's a man that all my eyes are on now. Hamza Shiraz there, look, as, as polite as possible, basically saying that negotiations broke down for whatever reason. Chris Eubank Jr. didn't want the fight. Uh, look, it is disappointing, uh, and I kind of want to... It'd be interesting to see where Eubank goes from here. I mean, I, I don't see no obvious fight for Eubank anywhere in the world. He doesn't seem to want the world champions, Adam Canali, Adames. He doesn't seem to want the Brits. Um, is he waiting for the Conor Ben fight? I have no idea, but it is a disappointing... I think it's disappointing for the card that Eubank isn't fighting Hamza Shiraz. It just brings the extra bit of spice to it, which has been interesting. Yeah, I asked Hamza that question, obviously, and he was dismissive of Chris Eubank and said he was foolish for not taking it, and I agree. Yeah. Um, but Eubank is clearly waiting for the Conor Ben fight because that's the only other thing that would draw his interest because he's not going to earn as much money, um, and he is at that stage of his career fighting um, other people other than Conor Ben. So... I think he must be holding out for that fight. And also, he's looked, I imagine, I'm not trying to disrespect him, but he's looked at Hamza and Shiraz and thought, that's going to be yeah, a very right. tough night for me. Yeah, you know? honestly, I think he's thought that as well. Like, nah, this one doesn't It's not a world title. It's, but he should, I think he should have taken it because you never know. Um, he, he might have had the wherewithal to test Hamza and Shiraz. Indeed. Uh, Mark Chamberlain versus Josh Padley is the, the final fight on the card. And look, there's always someone that we didn't know. We didn't know Mark Chamberlain, really. I mean, hardcore boxing fans, maybe, but the casual boxing fans didn't know Mark Chamberlain. I'm sure that applies to Josh Padley as well. You get an opportunity like this, who knows? You could change your life, as we've seen with a few fighters um, on this Riyadh season um, cards. Uh, Mark Chamberlain, though, look, on the cusp of, of taking that next big step, I think. If he comes through Josh Padley, I mean, he's a WBC silver lightweight champion. He can punch. He's unbeaten. He's got a name now. He could step up against some of the hot shots in America very soon. I, I like it. I mean, he's number five with the WBC. Um, he's seven uh, with the IBF. Seven or eight with the WBO. I mean, he's, he's right up there. He, he's in the mix. And, you know, he's Turkey Al Sheikh's uh, favourite boxer. He put, plucked from obscurity. Um, Artem Harat Yunyan. Obviously faces uh, Shaka Stevenson this weekend as he defends his WBC lightweight title. Um, his seventh ranked opponent, um, the Armenian based in Germany, who's no mug actually. 13 fights, um, 12 wins. His only loss was to Frank Martin. And Frank Martin's only loss was a couple of weeks ago, uh, obviously to um, uh, Tank Davis in a brilliant performance by Tank when he was stopped. 
bronze medalists, uh, Harit Yunya from Rio uh, Olympic Games, an Armenian based in Germany. He'll be a decent opponent. He might be a tricky opponent for Shaka Stevenson. And I mentioned Tank Davis and Shaka Stevenson in the same breath there because that's the fight we want a lightweight, really. But Mark Chamberlain, as you say, just to round off um, and go back to that against uh, Padley, Mark Chamberlain, if he puts in another great performance, I think he's working with Ben Davison now as well, by the way. He is. Yeah, he is. Um, if he puts in another great performance, he could be one of those outsiders that gets a world title shot. And it could be against someone like Stevenson. It could be and it's an, huge, by the way. Again, he's a huge lightweight. Huge. No, no, he is. He is. He's a big. He's a big boy. He, he looked like a middleweight at the press conference. He does. He yeah, does. Um, he's, he's a really, really big boy. Um, obviously, look, that rounds out the card. I'm happy you, you spoke about Shakur Stevenson, who is fighting uh, this weekend against Harrod Junior, and it's a fight no one's interested in, and 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 and, the, and that almost annoys me because Shakur Stevenson, we should be interested in his fights. But it needs to be fighting someone now. That they, these guys, all of them, kind of are in a position which annoys me. Tiafimo Lopez fought Steve Claggett on the weekend. No interest. No one was interested in it at all. What they've got to understand, they all think they're superstars. And you might say Javante is, and I'll counter it in a bit, but they all think they're superstars. They're superstars when they fight each other. Yeah. When they're not fighting each other, the world isn't interested. Javante yeah. did 150,000 pay-per-view buys we're led to believe against Frank Martin, which is not to be sniffed at, but it's not outworldly. Um, there was a lot of talk about Devin Haney versus Sandor Martin. No one wanted to bid on it. Matram didn't bid on it. The highest bid was $2 million. They've, someone's got to grab them all. Teofimo, Ryan, Devin, Shakur, Javante, and say, if you fight each other, there's millions to be made. Stadiums will sell out. If you don't fight each other, nobody is interested. Shakur's getting no plaudits for this fight on the weekend. Teofimo Lopez, no, no one cared about Steve Claggett. No one was really interested for Javante versus Frank, even though Javante did his best to sell it. it like, someone's just got to grab them. And this is where I hope His Excellency can come in on board and make these fights against each other. Because when they're not fighting each other, it's just, eh, honestly, it's, it's, it's just whatever. If they fight each other, for some reason, it really just sparks when they're not fighting each other, pfft, dead. Means I've nothing said it to you before. From 1980 to 1989, the four kings, Hagler, Leonard, Duran, um, and, and Hagler, Leonard, Duran, and Hearns fought each other nine times between 1980 and 1989. Look at that. All these guys you're mentioning right now are in their prime. I don't care yeah. what anyone says. That Some of them are younger, or some of them are slightly older by two or three years, or even four years with Tank. They're in their prime. Um, even if we were getting Shaka against Vasyl Lomachenko right now, great. Great, but I'll let's take get it. that fight. Yeah, and I'll take it. I'd take that tomorrow. I'd take that yesterday because, and they're both under top rank as well. Mm -hmm. And now that they're talking about Javonta Davis and Vasyl Lomachenko, I was advocating Shaka Stevenson and Vasyl Lomachenko ages ago. Just put that fight on. It's a oh, great yeah. fight. Um, and you can do it under the same banner. It's not difficult. Um, Ryan Garcia stepped away, suspended for a year. Devin Haney, sorry, rather, Devin Haney stepped away with Ryan Garcia and suspended for a year as well. Those two will fight in a year's time when, when uh, Garcia comes back. They're both out of the game right now. Tio Lopez, like you say, against Steve Claggett, didn't do anything, didn't do it, do it, do it for anyone. He won on points. No one was fascinated by it. I know Claggett was still, whatever he is, number seven or eighth ranked um, challenger, but you know, there's Subrio Matias, Isaac Cruz. I know he's, I know he's already um, uh, down to fight on the, on the August the 3rd card, but it's not right. It's, it's Claggett was number eight challenger, but you're absolutely spot on and these fights need to be made.